up to and including Darktable 3.6. Crop and Rotate was one module, and Perspective was another module. With the release of Darktable 3.8, Rotate has moved out from the Crop module, so the Crop module is now on its own some, and Rotate and Perspective have now been merged together as one module. Why that happened and how you can use both of these modules will be the subject of this video. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to episode 104 of Understanding Darktable. So, why the move? Myself and a whole bunch of other people have all expressed our, let's say, discontentment at the decision to move Rotate out of the Crop module. Because Crop and Rotate made a lot of sense. I use Crop all of the time, and rotate probably 95% of the time, but perspective, very rarely. And obviously a lot of other people felt the same way. So what prompted the developers to take this decision to move rotate out of the crop module and put it with perspective? It comes down to the maths. When you think about it, crop doesn't change pixel values anywhere in your image. All it does is say, cut off those pixels at the top, cut off these pixels at the bottom, cut off those pixels left and right. But that's all that it does. It doesn't affect any pixel values. Whereas rotation requires the recalculating of every pixel value in the image. Because a pixel that was here has now moved to here depending on, you know, which way you're rotating and by how much. But essentially, every pixel needs to be recalculated, where crop doesn't require any recalculation of pixel values. It simply cuts some out and leave them out. That's it. So that's the thinking behind it. And perspective, likewise, does, you know, the same mathematical gymnastics. The moment you do something to perspective, you are causing pretty much all of the pixels within the image to be recalculated. So that's why it was done. Now let's look into how the new modules work. So I've got this image from Kath's and my road trip in August of 2020. This is the old railway station at Mudgee in central New South Wales. The crop module on its own now just looks a little bit different to the way it used to look. We now have margins for left, right, top and bottom. I never touch those sliders, simply because under aspect, you have a bunch of different presets and they are named accordingly by their conventional print sizes on the left hand side and on the right hand side, they have a number which represents the ratio of the long edge compared to the short edge having a value of one. So a three to one panorama has a long edge of three where the height would be one, etc., etc. You can work that out for yourself. And I tend to use these presets for pretty much everything I want. You know, I love my 16 by nine crop, so I can just go 16 by nine and there's my crop. Now, what has changed with Darktable 3.8 is you no longer need to double click inside the cropped area to commit to that crop. Took me a little bit of working out and I've noticed a couple of people have mentioned the same thing. They're going, what's happening with the double click? It doesn't work anymore. No, all you need to do now is simply close the module up and the new crop will be committed to the image. Now, one thing that I mentioned in episode 101 was the fact that in Darktable 3.8, the new crop module appears later in the pixel pipe than the retouch module. To demonstrate as to why that is important, I've just fired up Darktable 3.6, opened up the same image, and as you can see, up there in the top left-hand corner, I've got a bit of dust on my sensor. So, we'll zoom in up there. And let's suppose I was to grab the crop and rotate tool as it existed in 3.6, not the new crop module, just crop and rotate. And we turn that on 
And if I was to move the edge of the crop so that that little bit of dirt was half in and half out of the image, and then double click to commit. And now if we bring up the retouch module and I grab a brush and I draw a shape like so, if my source pixels are coming from inside the cropped area, we can turn off the shape and we can see that everything worked the way it should. If we turn the shape back on, if I now move the source to pixels which are outside of the cropped area and we turn the shape off, look what's happened. This is why it's important that crop happens after retouch. Because even though there are pixels in the raw file, like in the data, there are pixels there to clone from, because it was happening after the crop and rotate module, it caused this sort of a problem where it wouldn't clone out those pixels because the source pixels were outside of the crop and the crop was happening first. So that's why it's important that crop has been moved to later in the pixel pipe in Darktable 3.8. So I'm just going to close 3.6. I'll go back to 3.8. So now we can see in our active modules group that retouch happens first and the crop module happens later. And that's why. Okay, so that's the crop tool. By the way, you can add your own aspect ratios to this list. You can see there I've added a wide panel of four to one. Uh, how to do that? I'll make a separate video for the patrons on that, but you don't have to be a patron to learn. It's in the help manual, so you can go and look it up. Okay, so the rotate and perspective module. This is the new version, you know, that has rotate and perspective in the one module. You will notice that the moment you open the rotate and perspective module up, even if you have already applied a crop, the rotate and perspective module will automatically show you the entire source image. Rotation, as you would expect, you can drag it left to rotate your image clockwise, drag it to the right to rotate your image anti-clockwise. As usual, you can right click and wag the dog to enter in any particular value you want. So if you wanted minus one degree of rotation, type in minus one, hit enter, and you get exactly that degree of rotation. Hit zero, we're back to zero. Next up, automatic cropping. You have the choice of original format, the largest area possible, or off. If you turn that off and you rotate, you will then see that you get black margins where Darktable has had to expand the canvas to allow for the rotation of the entire image. If you choose largest area, it will create a crop that uses the largest range of pixels that it possibly can to still create a rectangle, but it will disregard the aspect ratio of the original image. If you choose original format, then that will respect the original aspect ratio. So the original aspect ratio may not give you the largest possible collection of pixels. Make sense? Good. All right, then we have the perspective section. We have lens shift for vertical, where we can alter for perspective imbalances created by the physics of our lenses. Again, hit zero. We can do a horizontal. So if you've tried to photograph something from dead on in front and you've been just a little bit off from square, you can use this horizontal control to just square up the image. It does a pretty good job. Then we have the shear control. I'm just going to reset that rotation before I do this. Shear will, as the name suggests, shear the image. And as we can see in the background there, the image has been sheared, shorn. I'm not sure what the past tense of shear is uh, in this context. So as you can see, it has created some shearing of the original image. Again, set that back to zero. Lens model, generic or specific? I've never even looked at this section. How about that? 
So we can manually enter the focal length if the focal length has not been read by the module. So if, for example, I was shooting on my 15mm manual focus wide angle lens, no metadata from that lens gets transferred into the uh, metadata of the raw file that I shoot because it just doesn't have that language built into it. So in that instance, I would come in here and I would select 15 mil as the focal length. Crop factor will come down to what sort of sensor you've got in your camera. So if you're shooting a full frame, it's one to one. If it's APS-C, it'll be 1.5 for Sony. It'll be 1.6 for Canon. I don't know all the numbers for every manufacturer, I'm sorry. And an aspect adjust will do adjust the aspect ratio of the image by horizontal and vertical scaling. Oh, okay. So you can actually physically mangle the pixels of your image. I'm not sure why you would want to do that, but good to know that it's there if you need it. Next up, the best part, perspective helpers. So we've got the pencil tool. What we want is the verticals at this end of the building to actually be vertical and the verticals at that end of the building to actually be vertical. So what I would do is zoom in here and left click and drag, and I've just realized I'm not running Keymon, down that straight edge of the building. Now I can jump down to the other end of the building do exactly the same thing here. So now I've got these two straight lines. And as you can see with the naked eye, they are converging. And what I can do now is under fit, hit the correct for vertical perspective distortion. And as you can see, you can control click to only fix rotation or shift click to only fit the lens shift. But we will just do both. And what it has done is introduced a little bit of rotation, a little bit of lens shift. And now the verticals at either end of that building are now actually vertical. That's really cool. So this is another image from the same road trip. It's the inside of a goods van on an old railway line uh, museum. So I'm inside an old train carriage, basically. Now, the image doesn't look too bad, but... Again, we can see that the verticals are leaning outwards. You know, if you look at the verticals on the left-hand side of the image, they're sort of leaning out like that. If you look at the verticals on the right-hand side of the image, they're leaning out like that. Now, I could use manually defined perspective rectangle. This is particularly good if you're taking a photograph of something that needs to be rectangular, like a window or a door or something like that. But in this instance, I'm actually going to go to the third one, automatically analyze line structure in the image. We simply click on that and Darktable analyzes the entire image. It marks verticals as green, horizontals as blue, and diagonals as yellow and red. I'm not sure what the difference is between the yellows and the reds. Once it's done that, we can mouse over this fit control that says automatically correct for vertical and horizontal perspective distortions, fitting rotation, lens shift in both directions, and shear. And as you can see, there are some options there for other implementations. We will simply click that once, and it is done. And again, you can see there's a little bit of rotation, there's a little bit of lens shift, a little bit of shearing. And if we turn that off, we can now see that everything has squared up beautifully exactly as it should. Alrighty, so that is the new crop module and the new rotate and perspective modules. I hope that's been helpful. Uh, questions, comments, sing out down below. Uh, I would quickly like to say thank you uh, to all of you who, you know, reached out regarding my... <laughs> diatribe at the end of episode 103 uh, with words of encouragement and support. Thank you so much. Uh, that really does mean a lot to me. Um, I got to thinking about it later and thought, wow, there were, there were so many other crap things that were part of those stories that I didn't even think to mention. Um, and I'm not going to drag it up. It, it doesn't matter. But 
yeah, your words of support and encouragement were greatly appreciated. So thank you to all of you. All right, I think that does it for this episode. I will catch you in the next one. 